Okay. Mike from RPM here. Um, so I've been getting a lot of uh, emails, messages, and phone calls lately just about porting in general. And everybody wants to know, well, what should I do for this? And X, Y, and Z. And sometimes some things are as, just as dumb as the sound. Of course, that's why we love rotaries uh, for the brap. So start off here with a uh here's your factory plate here freshly nitrated ready for uh porting so um you can see here where they cut it very you know it's very mediocre flat you know you can see the machining marks here and then all your casting imperfections inside here down at the bottom there and of course the uh the runner on the inside here this is actually a pretty decent stock plate to be honest uh, most are a lot worse uh anyway so just your basics now i'm gonna try and i'm not gonna be able to cover everything so you know don't shoot me if i miss something uh it's a lot to go over and i want to keep it kind of short uh, there's more there'll be more later on anyway here's your basics oil seals right here corner seals right here nothing here this this is coming into your compression zone here where it's sucking in and then sealing as it comes by and then of course here and here you know um, there is no need to port this direction. I've seen, I've had plates come in that were like halfway down to here. There's absolutely no reason for that. The airflow comes through the intake here and up and over. There is no need to come through here. Okay. It does nothing. Now I don't, you know, a little bit of cleaning up here just for the, uh, the casting imperfection. You see the ridge there. It can be kind of hard sometimes to get that out, you know, but a little bit, not a big deal. All right, now, some people do a lot of what's called a back cut or on a street board. Well, what that is, is they cut backwards this way, okay? And then, of course, you pour it up and you can pour it a little down. I just like to do a little nice little chamfer here. Um, really doesn't do much. Gives a little bit more of an idle just because it's bringing the ports together. But uh, uh, it also adds a little bit to the effect. <clears throat> anyway, so now we're gonna move over to one of our, uh, my medium street port here. This is just a nice all around street port. It's good for someone that doesn't want it to be too loud. Um, works great. Anyway, but I try to carry it over quite a bit and then end over here. Now what this does is it allows the air to flow through here and then up and then over and then through without hitting any air walls here. Okay, so you get into some of these other ports where here's another port. I did not port this, but it's still still a good port, just hold. Now you can see here where it's a little rough on the edge here and might have been a little sharp, whatever. And you can see here it's kind of where the, the seals were kind of hitting a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna lap these plates and get this all cleaned up. Other than that, it's, a, it's not too bad. The step wear was only like one thou, uh, which uh, two thou is your uh, max. Um, anyway, so you see here is this port has been back cut a little bit from this plate. Now you can see how the nose here is flat and then rounded like a bull nose here. Now, when your port it comes in like this, it kind of kicks the air this way. You know, it still works. You know, it still makes good power. But I like it to flow a little more out and over. It just allows a lot better velocity um, in the port timing. Anyway, um, now I've also seen people too, there are other types of ports. I've seen street ports that bow up and over. So it's much more of a longer duration port, not so, you know, cut early. Um, and that will actually give you a much, uh, believe it or not, a bit softer of an idle. It won't be quite as punchy. Um, you know, when, you, when you're doing like up and then over and a, and a nice flat thing, it's like having a uh, very sharp cam load where, you know, in a very tall one where it just goes bump, boom. And that's, you're going to get a nice idle from that. Now, however, in your early RPM range, it may give you a little bit, 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 and then clear up. Um, you know, sometimes sound a little broken. It all depends on how big you go with this. Now, this one's not going to do that because this one's a, a medium street port. Um, I only came up, if you actually look at this port, the stock port to this port, 
it actually only comes up uh, maybe about four millimeters. Um, you can actually go a little bit further. Uh, my large one comes about up to here. Um, now, this is a great port for a semi. Um, I don't like to go too big. I don't like to cut over too far. If you cut over too far, you start cutting into your uh, side seal clearance. I like to keep as much side seal as possible. You're going to get your best sealing on your corners with as much as you can leave, okay? I'd much rather come down a little bit and up a little more and then add a semi. You know, you're not cutting away your area. So if anyone knows me, I'm, I really don't like bridge ports. Uh, they work. Uh, I'll, sometimes I'll do like a little half bridge, whatever for like, you know, the kids want the sound, um, but doesn't have the money to do a semi. Uh, because typically, you know, you need an intake manifold or at least modify your factory one for the extra two ports And then you actually have to do the same thing Which that costs money and that brings me to the bridge <clears throat> This is a bridge that I took out of another motor Now we had to lap the plates. It had a lot of, you know, we, we took about uh, two thou off this plate to get it like this uh, Now I got it. It goes out for nitrating Now I did not touch any of these ports This came this way, okay? It's not the, too bad of a bridge, you know, it does get a little skinny here, um, but this is still within reason. Uh, it's not my favorite. I try to keep a little more material in between and just push it over just a tidbit more up to about here, okay? And then leave as much material as possible here because your corner, it's hard to, rides right on here, okay? Now, the one thing that was bad about this plate and the way he cut this is he did not chamfer the edges and he didn't chamfer the edges here. And it was very sharp, um, which is not good. It needs to be beveled. Um, and the same with this port as well. You need to make sure you bevel it. You wanna make sure as the rotor rides over it that it's a smooth a smooth surface and does not you know, get caught on anything and whatnot. Now, here's a good factory corner seal, okay? Now, here are the corner seals that I took out of this motor. You can see there where it's got a groove that's been worn into it. And that's because as it rode over this port, it was cutting the face of the corner. Now, over time, it definitely it wore some material into the rotor area, or um, into the, the rotor groove area for the corner, and was causing the uh, corner seals to bind, which you know eventually uh, led to compression loss and numerous other things. Now, bridge ports do work. Um, a lot of people come to me and they're like, well, they don't last very long. And it's typically not a me mechanical error. Um, you know, it's, it's not your apex seals. It's not because you're not running enough premix. It's not because of a lot of things like that. Uh, typically, it's because it, it, it does eat the corner seals over time because you're cutting away that surface area. I don't like doing it. Um, and then, obviously, you can see this one I pulled out of Josh Fairbanks's car. Uh, he did not build this motor. He bought the car this way. And you can see Stevie Wonder was porting this bad boy. Um, this port should be you know three millimeter four millimeters that way okay he did not leave enough space in here and not to mention it's not even straight and didn't even clean it up um honestly it's you know he did an okay job here which to be honest that's pretty much a factory port just been port matched and kind of cleaned up a bit but that uh is awful anyway same deal here very sharp edges here very sharp Edge is very sharp here. That's just going to eat your corner seals. All right, moving on. Oh, semis, big fan, love semis. Um, one thing I love most about them is uh, it really does not cause any inherent wear, extra wear to the motor. Uh, some people are like, oh, well, won't it wear your apex seals out more? I'm like, look at the size of the exhaust port. The, the exhaust port doesn't wear out the apex seals any faster. There's no reason why your semi will, okay? Now, the one thing that's nice about a semi is I can do a very nice street port. You'll get the same sound as a bridge, bring in more air than a bridge. And on top of that, you still have all 
your sealing area here. So you're gonna get a very nice tight seal. Now inherently you are gonna, uh, the larger ports you run, the less vacuum your engine will have at idle, okay? And that's why they idle higher. So you need to idle the motor higher. Now, however, with my semi, uh, with a um, medium street port, I usually get about 12 uh, kPa. You know, 12 to 13, that's actually really good. Um, now I don't go crazy big on the ports. I'll do a nice, you know, nice little D port um, on the exhaust. Now keep in mind, the larger the exhaust ports you do, the longer it's gonna take for, for your turbo to spool. Okay, that is gonna be an issue. And then of course, you're gonna lose a little mid uh, low to mid range uh, torque. Also, however, you're gonna make up for that in the higher RPM range. All right, so now, Quick one, here's your apex seal. Very thin piece of metal. And everything I tell everybody is what happens when you start pushing a motor extremely hard, okay? What happens is you start doing these bridge ports, and especially like full bridges, and you start really pumping the boost. Cold air is coming through the side ports. There is nothing in the middle. So what happens is the ends of the apex seal, both sides, get cool air. Well, that center, does not get time to cool down, okay? So it gets very hot in the center. What ends up happening under, you know, crazy boost is you warp the seal. Don't necessarily blow your motor up, but you lose compression or have low compression problems because you've warped your apex seal. Um, when you have a semi and you're pushing it, you get cold air across the whole apex seal. It, it allows the apex seal to cool down as it goes around. Okay, so as you're pumping it harder and harder, um, it just allows for a much more reliable engine. And that's why you see them all in drag cars. Okay, and we learned this a long time ago with bridge ports. You know, we start cranking the boost up and lose compression. Now, you didn't break an apex seal or anything like that. You know, pull it out and you would mic your uh, seals and they'd be warped. Anyway, so that's my tutorial here. So, semi is a lot more. Uh, reliable hands down than doing a bridge now the bridge will do the job if you want a little bit of sound you know I'll typically just do like a little half bridge nothing crazy don't push it you know it, it'll make it'll it'll make good power though um, just not a huge fan of it it does eventually start eating away at the motor uh, so if you expect to get you know a lot of longevity out of it you know I, I, I've never seen them out of bridges and I mean I can do it but you just have to make sure that you really clean these edges up as you do your bridge and make sure that you know your port is is chamfered all the way around to make sure there's nothing that's 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 grinding away now another thing is too is if you look at the exhaust ports on here here's a factory exhaust port it is beveled all the way around okay so as the apex seal comes over it, like so, it does not grab, okay? Now I've seen people where they port upwards, very high up here, which is fine. You know, you can port up. Uh, I've seen, you know, you get, you get into your D ports. I come up to about here on my D port, and then I'll come down to about here for a street car, okay? Especially on my semi, and it gives a very good, uh, low to mid range, or me, you know, mid range power, uh, and your torque is still still have plenty of torque. Um, it is not necessary to always go so big. I've seen that too, where guys come in with these massive, massive exhaust ports and a medium street port, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Um, anyway, so now if you do not chamfer this exhaust port, I've I've had people come in where the apex seal grabs it snags jumps and then lands somewhere in here in this beveled area here and it just gouges the housing now theoretically you could have gouges here you could have flaking here you could have all kinds of stuff in this zone and you would never even notice an issue the only thing is is your apex seals would just wear out considerably quick uh, especially with it grabbing this specific engine that came in like that only had 2,000 miles on it and it was just destroyed um, unfortunately the guy paid for it so that's a big issue uh, so you need to make sure that you you know chamfer all your edges make sure it's nice and clean 
um, all the way around or else you're just gonna tear your seals up. But my recommendation, always do a semi if you can afford it. Um, even if you're just doing a modified lower uh, intake, uh, you can use a rotary works lower intake. It doesn't, you know, the fit kind of crap, but it does work. Um, you will have to take it to a machine shop and have it planed typically because the flanges usually work when they do all the welding on them because it's not a cast piece, it's a tubular welded piece. Um, does work, you know, in a, in a cheap manner, especially if you only want to make 550 or 600. Now, the one thing I do like about a semi is you don't have to ram boost down its throat. Let the engine breathe as much as it can on its own, okay? You know, I see plenty of guys that have street ports or bridges and they just start ramming boost down its throat. You know to make that extra power where, whereas on a semi i could run you know uh you know 15 pounds of, of boost on it the same as the bridgey or you know and it will outperform it in every way so now the only thing with uh semis if you're going to be using it you need to a larger hot side on your turbo uh, typically a 140, 145 ish because it pumps a lot of air and what will end up happening is once you come into boost it'll bottleneck at the turbo and your EGTs will spike. So uh, you need to pick a uh, you know a reasonable size hot side depending on your horsepower goals. Now if you're only planning on running 450 on like 10 pounds of boost or 485 actually I think I made 485 on like 12 or 13 pounds. Um, anyway, with a semi on pump gas, and this thing was a was an animal. It was just a very fun car to drive. It had a great sound. Um, anyway, that's uh, just my tidbit. Uh, you know, less boost, more life, less stress on the motor. Um, but like I said, it all comes down to your power goals. Okay. All right. Take it easy.